is going on everybody it's medicosis perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense let's continue our five minute review playlist we are in a nephrology segment in previous videos we talked about nephrotic syndrome and we are now in the nephritic syndromes we talked about the post streptococcal glomerulonephritis we talked about the rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis we talked about iga nephropathy Today, it's time for Alport syndrome. A clinical triad of blood in the urine. I can't hear and I can't see. Nephritic syndrome, sensory neural hearing loss, and congenital cataracts in the eye. This is my five minute review playlist. Please watch these videos in order, especially the ones about kidney pathology for maximum retention and flow. No pun intended. Hashtag neurogenic bladder. A normal kidney does not let anything in the urine. A kidney with nephrotic syndrome will let protein in the urine. Nephritic syndrome will let blood in the urine. Alport syndrome is mostly a nephritic syndrome. In nephrotic syndrome, I have hyperproteinuria and hypoproteinemia. That's why I end up with generalized edema. The generalized edema caused by kidney disease is usually accompanied by periorbital swelling, but the edema of heart disease, liver disease is usually not. Alport syndrome, nephritic syndrome, itis means inflammation the kidney is injured the glomerulus is literally crying and shedding tears of blood in nephrotic syndrome we had four features high protein myuria low protein myemia edema and hyperlipidemia in nephritic syndrome we have seven features the most important two are hypertension hematuria what are the seven features of nephritic syndrome Hypertension, hematuria, neck veins, distension, oliguria, mild edema and proteinuria, elevated bioenercreatinine, hashtag azotemia. Just because your urine looks red doesn't necessarily mean that these are red blood cells. This could be just a pigment. This could be myoglobin. This could be hemoglobin. But in nephritic syndrome, we have actual red blood cells. How did you know that they are actual red blood cells? I saw them under the microscope. Should I blame the kidney? Should I blame the ureter? Should I blame the bladder or the urethra? If you find casts and dysmorphic red blood cells, you can blame the kidney. The urine dipstick test is a doofus. It cannot differentiate between hemoglobin, myoglobin, actual red blood cells, and vitamin C can distort the results. When you find dysmorphic red blood cells, you can blame the kidney, specifically the glomeruli. When you find red blood cell casts, you can blame the kidney, specifically the kidney tubules. This is not your ureter's fault. Do not blame your urinary bladder. Do not blame the urethra. Blame your kidney instead. There is another test used to differentiate between glomerular disease versus tubular disease, and this is called the beta-2 microglobulin, and this was a separate video on my channel in my playlist called Labs. We've talked about nephrotic syndrome before. Today, it's time for nephritic because Alport syndrome is here. Your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma includes plasma proteins. The cells include red blood cells. If your kidney is losing plasma proteins, that's nephrotic syndrome. If your kidney is losing red blood cells, that's nephritic syndrome. Afferent arterial, efferent arterial, this is the glomerular capillary tuft, and this is the Bowman's capsule. Blood side, urine side. What is the name of this lovely pink cells in the middle of blood vessels, in the midst of capillaries? It's called the mesangial cell. Meso means middle. Angio, vessel. Oh, it's the cell between vessels. Cute. What's the function of mesangial cells? Go back to your kidney physiology and remember the factors that affect the GFR. Alport syndrome is a genetic disease. It's a hereditary glomerulopathy. You have mutations of the alpha chains of type 4 collagen and as you know, type 4 is under the floor. What do you mean? It's in the basement membrane. Of what? Of the glomerulus. It's in the glomerular basement membrane. Oh, so this is mutated? That's right. What else? You can also find autoantibodies destroying the mesangial cells. 
let's review the collagen subtypes. Don't forget that collagen is a protein in the extracellular matrix and it requires post-translational modification in molecular biology. Sophisticated stuff. Type 1 is in bone. Type 2 is in cartilage. Type 3 collagen is flexible. What do you mean? A blood vessel wall. Oh, because it's flexible? Sure. Type 4 is under the floor. It's in the basement membrane, including your glomerular basement membrane and it's mutated in Alport syndrome. Let's review kidney diseases very quickly. Minimal change disease, the patient is young, the prognosis is excellent. Focal segmental, the patient is older, the prognosis is worse, they do not respond to steroids as much. Membranous, the patient has lupus or hepatitis, there is thrombosis. Prognosis is not the best. If you have diabetes for a long time, whether it is type 1 or type 2, doesn't matter, you are at risk of three apathies. Retinopathy, neuropathy, nephropathy, hyalin arteriolosclerosis, Klein-Style Wilson nodule, diffuse mesangial sclerosis, papillary necrosis, podocyte fusion, don't forget to treat the diabetes, give ACE inhibitors, protect me from the hyperfiltration injury. Next, amyloid. The patient has amyloidosis, could be primary or secondary. Don't forget your Congo red stain and the apple green birefringence. You cannot treat it without managing the underlying cause. Diffuse proliferative. Now we stopped being nephrotic and we'll start being nephrotic nephritic. Oh, in the middle. Yes. Proteinuria, hematuria. The patient has lupus, subendothelial immune complex deposition, wire looping of capillaries. Treat it like you treat lupus, immunosuppressants. Next, membranoproliferative, nephrotic nephritic. Type 1, subendothelial, you have hepatitis or cryoglobulinemia. Type 2 goes into the membrane, that's why it's called dense deposit disease, and you have the C3 nephritic factor causing hypocomplementemia. Today's topic is Alport syndrome, but before we talk about it, there is a category of diseases known as hereditary glomerular diseases, and we have two main subtypes, the Alport syndrome and the thin basement membrane disease, aka benign familial hematuria. Which one is worse? Of course, this one, because this is called benign. Most of these patients do not even know that they have the disease. Kidney function is virtually normal. They might have microscopic hematuria, only visible under a microscope, but they will not see blood in the urine for the most part. Of course, there are exceptions. Alport syndrome, that's the bad one. It could be X-linked recessive translation, more common in boys than girls. Or it could be autosomal dominant, whether boy or girl, doesn't matter. And it usually comes with incomplete penetrance. Or it could be autosomal recessive, hashtag consanguinity, sweet home Alabama. Terrible joke, I'm sorry. I'm messing with my friends in Alabama. I'm using an iPad to make this video, and Tim Cook was born in Alabama, so I'm joking. Sorry. Hey, medicosis, have some respect for yourself. Yes, ma'am. Alport syndrome is a genetic disease. Could be x linked recessive or autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. What's the problem? Mutation of the alpha chain of type 4 collagen. What else? I can find autoantibodies against the mesangial cells in my kidneys. Symptom-wise, blood in the urine, I can't hear, I can't see. Nephritic syndrome with gross hematuria and microscopic hematuria, sensory neural deafness, remember your Rene test, you remember your Weber test, you remember your Schwebach's test to differentiate between conductive deafness versus sensory neural or nerve deafness. Then you have ocular findings, mostly cataracts, congenital bilateral cataracts. How do I diagnose it? The clinical picture is key. In a child with family history, electromicroscopy will show you the autoantibodies destroying the glomerular basement membrane. Genetic tests will confirm the diagnosis and will tell you about the mutation. Complications, unfortunately, many patients end up with chronic kidney disease. If you remember my previous video in my comparisons playlist, we talked about Alport versus reactive arthritis. Each one is a triad. They are very similar in the term of triad, but they are not the same disease. Example, Alport syndrome. I can't see, I can't pee, 
I can't hear a bee. How about reactive? I can't see, not because of cataract, but because of uveitis. I can't pee, not because there is blood in the urine, but because there is urethritis. I can't bend my knee. Oh, because there is inflammatory arthritis. Medicosis clinical pearls for the pros. Alport syndrome can cause chronic kidney disease. True? Yes. And these are children. True? Yes. Therefore, doctors might try to give them priority for kidney transplant. True? Yes. After receiving a new kidney, remember, this new kidney is foreign to me. I will make new anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies against the new kidney that I received. And this is an example of secondary good pasture syndrome, if I can call it this. So just because I have anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies doesn't necessarily mean that I was born with them. I could have acquired them later in life. Something that your woke professor will never tell you. These are the stages of chronic kidney disease. Pause and review. Here is nephrotic syndrome review and nephritic syndrome review. If you want to be an excellent student, get a blank sheet of paper and write everything down that was on these two slides. I have more than 1000 videos here on YouTube, plus premium courses on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com, such as my antibiotics course. It's not just about antibiotics, it also covers antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic medications. You can also master kidney physiology like it's nobody's business. This is very important for you to understand renal pathology, renal pharmacology, nephrology, and acid-based disturbances. Speaking of which, I have a third course about this. You can download it today at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.